When they say a tumor is benign, it means it ends in oma. If it's malignant, it's sarcoma or carcinoma. Yes. Then when they say, when they talk about the boundaries, for example, let's say this is a boundary I just drew. Can you see that it's well demarcated, so well circumcised or encapsulated, but malignant is irregular, yes, poorly circumcised. Then microscopically, mal uh, malignant would not resemble the tissue of origin, so it's poor resemblance. Why benign will resemble the tissue of origin? Then basal polarity will be retained in benign and lost in malignant. That's why they say malignant tumor invade other tissue because they break the basal membrane and invade. Pleomorphism, please. What's pure pleomorphism? It means the cell looks different. You look at this. You look at this slide, and all of them look different. That's pleomorphism. It's what absent in benign and present in malignant. Hyper what's chromatism or hyper or it will be basophilic hyperchromic nuclei. Yes, absent here, present here. Then mitosis will be pathological. They mostly talk about something known as atypia. Atypia will be what tissue atypia or cellular atypia is the same thing. Yes, tissue atypia or cellular atypia. They can also say in the nucleus there's nuclear atypia, but when the clock is asking you what type of atypia is it, it will be tissue or cellular. Then we know that. So after we know that, let's quickly do a few. We'll talk about, we don't, need, once you know that doing the tumor is very easy, you don't even need to learn the tumor, but there are some special tumors we are definitely going to learn. So when they talk about the squamous, yes, when they talk about, okay, when it, I said, I said something about carcinoma and sarcoma. Yes, what's there between carcinoma and sarcoma? Carcinoma is gotten from our epithelial cells. Carcinoma is gotten from what? From our epithelial cells, so squamous, columina, and, and cuboida, yes. And papilloma, when you talk about papilloma, papilloma is gotten from our mucous membrane. But of course, before you get to the mucous membrane, you also have to first pass through the epithelium, yes. So you can say both epithelium and mucus, and the mucosa, yes, mucus. And then when they talk about squamous cell carcinoma, let's break this down. So you can see that this is a cancer of the squamous cell, yes. But because it's carcinoma, it's what? It's malignant. So you can see squamous cell carcinoma is a malignant tumor of what? Your squamous cell. Now, there's something known as keratin pills. Remember I told you that we have, our skin is stratified squamous keratinized. So keratinized epithelium contain keratin pills when there's a tumor. But for example, your esophagus that is stratified squamous non-keratinized, yes, from a histology, yes, lecture. There won't be what keratin pairs in the carcinoma. Okay, I've done that. Then let's quickly do papilloma. Papilloma, as I said, is both the epithelial and mucous tissue. So you can see it originates from the what? It originates from the this papilloma. Yes, it originates from the skin and mucous membrane. And please, if Croc talk about a tumor looking like a papilla, and they didn't talk about all this atypia, pleomorphism, it will be papilloma because we're in the oma, so it's benign. Yes. Then when they talk about adenoma, aden means it's from a glandular structure. So please, if Croc talk about anything gland and they say they're talking about a tumor, it has to be, it has to be aden. So if it's a benign tumor, it will be adenoma. But if it's a malignant, it will be adenocarcinoma. Okay, good. That's all you need to know. Trust me, don't need to go into details because we are not pathologists. Then now we are going to the different organs. Yes, now this is where you need to know maybe just a few things. When you're talking about gastric carcinoma, now this is what carcinoma. So you can see that this is a malignant tumor of what your stomach. There are different types. Now, please look. First of all, let me start from here because I noticed what they like to do. You know, croc, they like to use different names to confuse students. Now, let's look at. Now, they can be an. If they talk about a glandular structure, yes. But don't think, don't look at this part, this papillary mucus. Just forget about it. If they talk about the stomach and they talk about the, a cancer of the glandular structure to be adenocarcinoma, so malignant, yes. Then if they talk about singlet, now there are other types of carcinoma, yes, of gastric carcinoma. It can be singlet uh, ring carcinoma. It can be uh, this carcinoma or solid carcinoma. And please, solid carcinoma is what poorly differentiated. It can be squamous cell carcinoma, but do you think our epithelium in our if it's, it's a squamous cell carcinoma, of course it will be non-keratinized because we don't have 
keratin, keratinization in our stomach, yes. Because it's a tumor, yes. Tumors are pathological. Okay, why am I telling you this? Now, let me go back to this part. Now, look. When they are talking about uh, this, when they are talking about colloid or mucous carcinoma, look at what they wrote here. I don't know if you can see. Microscopically, the mucoid carcinoma contains abundant pools of mucus, of course, and what? A small number of tumor cells sometimes having a singlet ring appearance. So they sometimes croc would like to, if they're talking about a singlet ring, maybe in the question you're looking at, they say there's a presence of singlet ring cells. They won't tell you the answer is singlet ring carcinoma. They'll put what? Muco mucoid carcinoma or colloid carcinoma. That's what I'm showing you this. Another one again they might talk about is this. This one here. I can't pronounce it. Um, Cicreous carcinoma. What's the morphology? You can see that the stomach will be thickened. There'll be extensive desmoplasia. What's desmoplasia? A lot of fibrous tissue, which will give the stomach a what leather bottle appearance, or also known as lintin plastica. Just circle that key point. Yes. Now let's move on to the lungs. Now, when they talk about, so we know what cicerous carcinoma is supposed to look like, yes. We know what singlet carcinoma is supposed to look like. And if they talk about solid carcinoma, they will say in the question that it is poorly differentiated. Okay, now let's move on to the lungs. Yes, we are, do we are doing what? Carcinoma of the lungs or malignant tumors of the lung, yes. What you need to know. What will Croc focus on? Croc will talk about three types, maybe four, three types. The first one is adenocarcinoma. You don't need to know these subtypes. Yes. If it's an adenocarcinoma of the lung, we'll talk about the lung and the, can and the cancerous growth of a granular structure. Yes. And we'll talk about atypism or pleomorphism. So you know that it's malignant. Yes, that's why it's carcinoma. And because it's a granular structure, it's adenocarcinoma of the lungs. Now, when you're talking about, now, another thing Croc will use, another, what the two, there are two types of, uh, cancer, they want to also differentiate in the lung. Small cell, let's start from the large cell carcinoma first. The large cell carcinoma, what do they mean? As the name implies, they contain very large cells. And please note here that they said there will be what? Abundant cy cytoplasm. Please, very important, abundant cytoplasm. Because when you look at the small cell carcinoma, it's very similar to the... Um, it's just no small cell and large cell. That's what we're focusing on. It's very similar to this large cell carcinoma, but what would they talk about? Small, that the cell will be small. And they might also talk about hyperchromic nuclei. Both of them have hyperchromic nuclei, yes, prominent nuclei. But what do you observe? In small cell carcinoma, there's no abundant. What? They said have more abundant cytoplasm, which, let me see. No, that's this, this wrong. It's not supposed to have abundant cytoplasm. It's not meant to have abundant cytoplasm. It's, it's not correct. It's meant to have less cytoplasm. This large cell carcinoma has more cytoplasm. So if Croc is talking about a structure that have more cytoplasm, please choose large cell. But they talk about hyperchromic nuclei. They didn't specify whether large or small, and they didn't talk about cytoplasm. It would be small cell carcinoma. But when we start with MCQ, it would be so much easier. Then, now, yes, we are moving to breast cancer. Please... Breast cancer, when Croc is talking about breast cancer, they want to confuse students with what? Medullary carcinoma and medullary carcinoma and where's the other, the other uh, carcinoma here? Look here, medullary carcinoma and please just write all this key point down and serious carcinoma. So you can see that in the stomach, you also have a uh, serious carcinoma, but in the breast, you also have another, another, you also have serious carcinoma in the breast, yes? And do you observe that they will not describe the, the breast, um, this one, as leather bottle appearance? No. They will say there's a lot of what stroma, large amount of fibrous stroma or desmoplasia. But in the medullary carcinoma, they're talking about a breast and they're talking about a carcinoma. And, it's, and they just mention anything about the uh, stroma is, is minor, is small, like it's small. It's small compared to the other cells. It would be medullary. But they talk about fibrous stroma for the breast. 
it's a lot. It will be serious carcinoma. These are the unique things you use to differentiate it. We don't need to know any other things, yes? Because when you start to know any other things, you start to confuse it. So let's go back to the presentation again. So you can see that medullary carcinoma of the breast, you can see that, what did they say? Can you see that the loose connective tissue stroma is scanty? When we get to the MCQ, you see that it makes sense. I did, because when you start reading, um, if you want to know everything, it's confusing. Yes, because a lot of things you see in other tumors can be, you can see them in almost all the tumors, but we need to find the unique things. You can see what again in medullary carcinoma, apart from the fact that it has loose words, stroma, you can see it's, they, they can describe it microscopically, they're looking like what a brain like structure. Yes, brain like, freshly brain like structure. When the stomach, it will be what leather bottle appearance. Okay. Then, Paget disease of the nipple. Please, very important. Paget disease of the nipple. Look, macroscopically, I don't know if this is big enough. They will tell you that they will talk about a nipple. Yes, they will mention a nipple and they will say that the skin of the nipple is crusted or fissured or, or serrated. So it's looking like, like cracks. Yes, and they'll talk about, they will, if they tell you there's Paget cell, you know that it's Paget disease of the nipple. Yes. So they, will, they won't talk about Paget cells, but you know there's something known as Paget cells that will be there. Yes. Okay, just focus on this crusted and ulcerated nipple. Then what is the next thing we need to know about? What's the next kind of unique cancer we need to know about? Okay, now we are, we are moving towards the uterus. Now this is my notes from I don't know how long. Please don't laugh at my handwriting, yes? Now there's something known as hydratiform mole, yes? It's also known as molar pregnancy. What is it? What, what, what is it? This is when... Uh, spermatozoa fertilize an egg that doesn't have nucleus. Okay. And it's spermatozoa fertilize an egg that doesn't have nucleus. What does it look like? Look here. I have a very beautiful diagram for you to see. What does it look like? If you look here, this is what it looks like. Can you see how it looks like? That's why they call it hydratiform mole. Can you see the way it looks like? Yes. It looks like uh, if they talk about a uterus that is very cystic, now uterus, very cystic, yes? Small, 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 like cystic structures, and that's formal. But what else can Croc also use to explain this? Now, I want you to know that what you see here is abundant what? You see a lot of syncytial trophoblasts. Yeah, you see a lot of syncytial trophoblasts. You also see a lot, a lot of chronionic villi. I'm just pointing out the key things. And what, look at what they wrote here, grape-like vesicles. So if crops talk about uterus, they have a lot of grape-like vesicles. It's hydratiform mole. They can so they, they will also go on to say there's presence of villi, presence of cystic trophoblasts. Why am I specifying the villi? Because there's another uh, cancer of the uterus known as chorio choriocarcinoma, also known as chorioepithelioma or chorioblastoma. Now, it's what happened is that it's after sometimes the hydratiform mole can progress into choriocarcinoma. And what do you observe? In this choriocarcinoma, there would be there would be a lot of what? Syncytial trophoblasts and cytotrophoblasts. But what did I write here? No villi formation. Okay, good. But this is also in choriocarcinoma. They're not talking about grip like vesicles. But sometimes croc will remove grip like vesicles and tell you there's no villi. You know that it's choriocarcinoma. Okay, now that we know that, what else are we supposed to? What other other cancer? Okay, lympho, um, Hodgkin's lymphoma, chron chronic lymphocytic leukemia, very easy. First of all, if you're looking for acute myelogenous leukemia, Croc will not question you know, acute myelogenous leukemia morphology because it's acute, yes, and it changes very rapidly, and it's an emergency case. We are not, at that time, we are not so bothered with the pathologies, yes. Acute myelogenous leukemia would be in pathophysiology. We don't really check it in the in pathomorphology. But what would they question you on? Chronic myelogenous leukemia, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, acute lymphocytic leukemia, now not acute myeloid leukemia. You will never see a question in pathomorphology on acute myelogenous leukemia. Then Hodgkin's um, lymphoma, lymphoma. Yes, not leukemia, lymphoma. Okay, now, what's the features? In chronic myelogenous leukemia, in Morphology, look here. We all know that from part of the I talked about presence of my, myelocytes and metamyelocytes. Please, important, pyoid bone marrow. They talk about your bone marrow looking like a pus. 
place, it will always be chronic myeloid leukemia. Important point. There will be splenomegaly, hepato, hepatomegaly, and also what lymph node enlargement. This lymph node enlargement is what is diffuse, is systematic, is occurring in all lymph nodes. But in chronic lymphoid leukemia, because it's lymphoid, you see what, and it's chronic, you see mostly lymphocytes. But what will you see? Enlargement of only the superficial what, lymph nodes. Then in acute lymphocytic leukemia, even though I, there's no slide here, what would they talk about? Lymphoblasts. Yes, and I told you that in acute lymphocytic leukemia, you mostly see it in what? In children. Okay, and it's lymphoblasts. Then let's go to non Hodgkin's lymphoma. Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay, did I send it? Where is it? I didn't send it. What do you mean? Okay, see, I sent it. So in in Hodgkin's lymphoma, please, what you need to focus on, please read Sternberg cells. Yes, read Sternberg cells, also known as what giant cells. So if you talk about uh, enlargement of lymph nodes, yes, and uh, you can see that Hodgkin's lymphoma is also called as lymphogranitomatosis. Yes, and you can see uh, read Sternberg cells. What else do you see morphologically? What would I need to point out for you? Also, look here. They said, let me let me zoom this. Let me make this bigger so we can see in the third sentence. What did they say? They said the nucleus have abundant cytoplasm, prominent with nuclei, so on and so forth. But what did they write? At the end, it looks like what? O I with clear halo. Okay, key point again. Now, there's also, there's also subclassification. When they talk about uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma with lymphocytic predominance, Croc will talk about there's a lot of lymphocytes. But if Croc talk about uh, lymph, uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma and they did not specify that there's a lot of lymphocytes, please, it will be what? Hodgkin's lymphoma with what? Lymphocytic what? Depletion. Because if they tell you Hodgkin's lymphoma, they tell you decrease of lymphocytes, it's too easy. So they'll tell you, they won't mention anything about but that's if when they are specifying, right? If you see that in the option, they are specifying, but they didn't talk about whether there's an increase or decrease. The answer will be lymphocytic depletion, Hodgkin's lymphoma. Then nodular sclerosis, they'll talk about what a lot of what fibrosis and they'll, they'll, they'll talk about fibrosis that replace sclerosis. So just talk about fibrosis. Then in mixed cellularities, there'll be a lot of lymphocytes and please, your so we we'll look at what they wrote here. There's heterogeneous cell infiltration, a lot of different cells, but which include mostly eosinophil, plasma cells. So there'll be lymphocyte, plasma cell, and please eosinophils. Okay, that's the end of the lecture. Let's start with our presentation. Perfect timing. Tumor. So a surgical examination of a new growth has shown that the parenchyma has been formed of in in tangumentary epithelium. Then they went on to say that this um, with an increased amount of layers. Stroma together with epithelial proliferations forms papilla. What form of atypism will, will it be? So I told you that when they're asking you what form of atypism will it be, your answer will always be what? Yeah, I think that's my mistake. Tissue or nuclear, it's not meant to be cellular. We don't have cellular atypism, no tissue or nucleus so the answer will be tissue thank you very much um students next question uh examination of the patient has shown a tumor mass 1.5 centimeter in diameter in the lesser curvature of the stomach what growth is this so please this question this is a very old classification of tumor i noticed that even croc have not asked any question about this they did ask it in the previous text like maybe 20 from 2010 to maybe 2013, but they have stopped asking it because it's a very old way of classifying tumors. But this is what they are talking about. When they talk about the exophytic growth of uh, a tumor, it means it is above the epithelium. So if you look at this stomach, you can see that it is above the epithelium here. And endoph endophytic growth means it is below the epithelium. So, um, 
in the question, they say the tumor is found on the lesser curvature on the stomach. Now, when we talk about lesser curvature on the stomach, of course, when we say lesser curvature, we are talking about the upper part here. This is the lesser curvature. We don't say lesser curvature and refer to this part of the stomach. No, this is lesser curvature of the stomach. And this is what greater curvature of the stomach. So we don't put, talk about the internal, internal part. So if the tumor is on the lesser curvature of the stomach, is it above or below the epithelium? Who wants to answer for me, please? Fetic. A microscopic examination of the biopsy material from the tumor in the right bronchus membrane has shown um, the cell and tissue atypism, appearance of some structures that form what epithelial pairs. Define the characteristic of this process. So this is squamous cell carcinoma with keratinization because there's epithelial pairs, keratin pairs. So they're asking you if it's a benign or a malignant tumor, please, what is the answer, student? Malignant. Good. Uh, histological examination of the biopsy material from chronic healing portovaginalis of a 47-year-old woman has shown sign of cellular atypism. The basic membranes without changes diagnosis disease. Now, of course, I didn't talk about this, but now what is carcinoma in situ? Carcinoma in situ is a malignant tumor, but why are they saying in situ? It means that it is malignant, but it, has, it hasn't um, broken through the basement membrane. So it has the atypism, pleomorphism, yes, but it hasn't yet just broken through the membrane. So when we see a cancer like that, it's known as carcinoma in situ. And it's very important that we remove this cancer before it penetrates the tissue. Because when it penetrates the tissue, it can spread to other organs. So it's known as carcinoma in situ. So that's why they said that here, there's, they said there's a sign of what cellular atypism. Why did they keep talking about cellular atypism? I have to read on this again. The basic membrane is without changes, diagnosed this disease, so of course it will be carcinoma in situ. The next thing they talked about, a new skin of solid consistency looked like a nodule with papilla surface and reminded cauliflower was removed. Microscopically, the tumor consists of mainly what? Mainly papillae. Then they went on to say that the polarity of the cell, the stratification of the membrane is what preserved. And they also say what well, the polarity of the cell, yes. We don't say anything about atypism, we don't say anything about polymorphism, we don't say anything about, yes. Now they're asking you what is the possible diagnosis. So of course it will be papilloma, because they said it's like a papillae, and we didn't say anything about being malignant, so it's with papilloma. Why not fibroma? Because it's fibroma will be, they'll talk about fibrous tissue. Adenoma will be what? A glandular structure. Fibro adenoma will be both fibrous and what? A glandular benign tumor. So that's why the answer is A. 71. During the histological examination of a stomach, a great amount of singlet cell have been detected. Name the histological variant of, the, of this cancer. So singlet cell carcinoma. Let's look at our presentation again here. Singlet cell carcinoma. Singlet cell carcinoma. Yes? Let's look at it. I told you that, of course, if they go and put for you singlet cell carcinoma, it will be too easy, yes? So here, when I was talking about this, I told you that um, if it's solid carcinoma, it will, they'll talk about it being poorly differentiated, yes? Serious carcinoma, we explain what it look like. And I told you when I talk about singlet cell carcinoma, they will refer to as what well, mucoid or colloid carcinoma. So here they said there's a lot of, they say what? Well, they said there's a great amount of singlet ring cell. Name this variant of this cancer. What do you think the answer will be? Of course, mucinous carcinoma. Let me confirm that, 71. Yes, D. So you see what they are doing. So that's why it's mucinous carcinoma. Because if they put for you that, it will be too easy. Again, 72. ACC, two year old man had kidney removed. A microscopic examination has shown a tumor in the form of a node, approximately eight centimeter in diameter. The tumor is variegated with multiple hemorrhage and necrosis on the cut surface. Historically, the tumor consists of light cells that form alveolar and papillary structures. The invasive growth of the tumor, yes, is moderate. Please don't confuse papillary structures to papillae. Don't confuse it, please. They're just saying it looks like, yes, <sighs> mainly, mainly cells have pathological mitosis and hyperchromic nuclei. Diagnose the tumor of this kidney. 
so I know I didn't talk about, I didn't talk about the kidney cancer, but the answer will be renal cell carcinoma. The answer, we're going to do this again when we get to the kidney section, because in the kidney section, we're going to talk about chronic um, glomerular nephritis, acute hypertension, so we'll do this more. But you can see they're talking about a kidney, yes? And why are we not going for adenocarcinoma? Adenocarcinoma, because they didn't talk about a granular structure. Why are we not talking about nephroblastoma? Nephroblastoma we mostly seen in children. You can see that this is an old man. Of course, why are we not choosing clear cell adenoma? Because adenoma is a word, glandular structure. Do we say anything about a glandular structure in our question? No. So by method of elimination, what do we have left? Renal cell carcinoma. I hope it makes sense. Histological examination of the mammary gland. Now we're talking about the mammary gland, so the breast has shown what poorly differentiated atypical cells of epithelial agenesis. I don't think I explained this, but let's move on. They form trivaculate separated by connective tissue. The cell and stroma is what one ratio one. So please, they sell the cellular structures and the stroma is one ratio one. They did not say that the stroma is what is less. Because if the stroma is less, that's why we think about medullary. But the stroma is small, we think about what um, serous carcinoma. But here they said it is one ratio one. And what did they talk about it? Poorly differentiated what cell. We already know that from the from when we're talking about the stomachers, they like to use, uh, use poorly differentiated uh, carcinoma. They also like to name it as what solid carcinoma. Even though if this is breast, yes, it's the same naming. Look here. This um carcinoma they are talking, asking you about this, it's a very rare um cancer. Can you see? It's very rare. I'm actually surprised that they're talking about it. It is very rare. Maybe like 10 people have it in the world. It's very rare. But let's let's know why we are going for solid carcinoma. Why not the rest? So we already know why it's, we're not going for serious carcinoma yet because there'll be a lot of fibrous tissue. Why are we not going for adenocarcinoma yet? Because they didn't talk about it. They talk about a granular structure. I don't think so. Epidermoid carcinoma means epidermis. So squamous cell carcinoma, because it's our skin, is keratinization. So squamous cell carcinoma with keratinization. Yes. So we are left with solid cell carcinoma. So that's why the answer will be solid, it will be solid carcinoma, not small cell carcinoma. Yes. We don't talk about small cell carcinoma in the breast. We talk about small cell carcinoma in where? In the lungs. So that's why the answer will be solid carcinoma. I hope it all makes sense. A particular examination of the endometrium scrape of an elderly woman has shown that a, a typical cell with was keratin pairs or epithelial pairs. What is your diagnosis, students? Please answer this question. Will it be C or D? D. Good. D with hornification. Yes, that's keratinization. So it will be D. Good. 75. The 55-year-old uh, woman had uterine bleeding. Diastonic dilation and curatage. What do they mean by that? They will dilate the cervix, get into the uterus, and scrape the uterus. That's what they mean by dilation and curatage, yes? When they want to remove something from the uterus. But what they went on to say that what? Among these uh, granular elements, what do you see? Among these glandular elements, yes? Different, they are different in form and sizes, formed of a typical cell with hyperchromic nuclei and what numerous or what pathological mitosis. What can we think of? Of course, adenocarcinoma, because they talk about what the granular structure, yes, they're among the uh, blood elements, granular, among blood elements, granular, among blood elements, elements, they're meant to say the granular elements consist of. This is, yeah, English is terrible. So that's why it's adenocarcinoma. Why not glandular hyperplasia? Because hyperplasia is just increasing the number of cells, not a cancerous stuff. Yes, yeah, not cancerous. There's no atypism here. Just increasing the size. Sorry, increasing the number. Increasing the number of hyperplasia, yes. Hypertrophy is increasing size. Why not chorioepithelioma? This is also known as what? Choriocarcinoma. And I think I told you that it won't have villi, yes. And there'll be a lot of what? Syncytial trophoblasts. Why not adenomatous polyp? Because of course this is a granular structure, but a polyp looks like let's talk about a polyp looks like uh, like a ten like a like 
it looks like will I say a tennis a tennis ball but that's not what they're talking about we, you know, we know they're talking about a cancerous substance so it's adenocarcinoma so that's why the answer is A let's move on a bronchoscopy has shown a polypus mass once in time diameter in the initial part of the bronchus surgical examination diagnosed a tumor of what small lymphocyte like cell with hyperchronic nucleus. So you see in this question, they specify to you that the lymphocyte is small. Yes. They ask you what is the variant of this. So of course it will be undifferentiated small cell carcinoma. Gradually, a patch of necrosis and the ulcer in the middle has developed on the skin uh, surface of the skin. So they said necrosis and ulcer on this patient's skin of the face. When they looked at this biopsy material from the when it when they looked at the they took a section of this uh, also at the the epithelium there they found what atypical cells with pathological mitosis what is this of course to be skin cancer yes why not sarcoma carcinoma and sarcoma did i tell you what the difference is carcinoma i told you is epithelium squamous columna cuboida but sarcoma is fibrous tissue cartilage tissue fat tissue Yes, they are mesenchymal in origin. Yes, bone tissue. That's sarcoma. Yeah, when we get to this, you see what I'm talking about. You can see that lipose, lipoma is it, it, it. No, let's talk about um, this. No, don't worry, we'll get there. Let's, let's move back. So that's why the answer is no sarcoma, yes. Because you're talking about the skin of the face. And the skin of the face is what? It's a stratified squamous, squamous. Yes, yeah, so skin cancer. It's not a papilloma. The papilloma will talk about what? A papillae. It's not a trophic ulcer. If they talked about there's an ulcer on the face, but they didn't talk about pathological mitosis, yes, we can choose what trophic ulcer. And it's not a fibroma because they didn't talk about fibrous tissue. In the mammary glands, biopsy material, solid layers, so this is a breast, yes, solid layers built of small epithelial cells with polymorphous nuclei. So polymorphous nuclei means what? Polymorphism. And what? Pathological mitosis. The quantity of the stroma is minor. What is this disease? Of course, it will be what? Medullary. But if they told you that the stroma is a lot, it would have been what? Serious carcinoma of the breast. Next question. There is detected, can you see we're in mesenchymal tumors now? There are detected a solid movable tumor, clearly uh, something, something, something. They went on to say that it had it is white color on the cut surface, but microscopically, which is always what we use to what to differentiate it. Let's move on. They said presented with fibrous tissue, fibrous tissue. Okay, microscopically there was chaotically plexiform collagen fibers. The cell quantity is minor. Did they talk about atypism or pyromorphism? No. So what do you think your answer will be? Of course, fibroma, because it's benign. Yeah. So if it's myoma, they talk about a tumor of the muscle. And they won't talk about atypism and all this, all this stuff. So it's a benign muscle tumor. That's myoma. What is a desmoid? Okay, so please, let's, let's, first of all, let's, let's not be faster than ourselves, yes? Let's check if hard and soft fibroma, because we have hard and soft fibroma. Let's talk about it. Let's look at the differences. So hard, okay. Hard fibroma, also known as what? Well, fibrodurum. It's also known as called as what dermatofibroma. Please know the other names. It contains mostly there's a lot of fibrous tissue and few cells. Yes. And his example is a keloid scar. I think I've explained a keloid scar. Yes. Have you seen someone who has who have you seen someone who has been badly burnt before? And when the body tries to heal, you see a lot of scar tissue, those really, really large scars. That is keloid scar. Okay. Then soft fibroma. Yes, it contains a lot of um a lot of cell and less fibro tissue. It's still a fibroma, but the when you when you want to compare the amount of fibro tissue is less compared to a hard fibroma. So what what uh, where do we mostly see? They said it mostly appears on the neck, armpit, and groin. Then what is a desmoid? Okay, please a desmoid. Croc will not ask you on desmoid, yes, because it's like another subname but desmoid is a type of fibroma please but this fibroma occurs mostly in abdominal muscles 
sorry, in abdominal connective tissue, not muscles, abdominal connective tissues. So that's what a desmoid is. Please don't confuse it. Let's move on. In the skin, uh, so on and so forth, there's presented keratically collagen fibers with little amounts of spindle cell. So there's a lot of collagen fibers, but less cell. So we can see that this is a hard fibroma. That's why they call it what? A solid fibroma. So we saw the other name, yes? Good. What is a leomyoma? Very important. We should know what a leomyoma is. So a leomyoma is a tumor of smooth muscles. Please. It is a benign tumor of smooth muscle. What is a rhabdo? Myoma. A rhabdomyoma is a benign tumor of your heart muscles. So myoma is benign tumor of your muscles, mostly skeletal muscles. Rhabdomyoma is a benign tumor of your heart muscles, while leomyoma is a benign tumor of your smooth muscles. So if they talk about a rhabdosarcoma, it will be what? A malignant tumor of your cardiac muscle. A leosarcoma will be a malignant tumor of your smooth muscle. While a myosarcoma will be a malignant tumor of your skeletal muscle. I hope that makes sense. If anybody wants me to repeat, call me back. A uterus removed in the course of an operation, was delivered for histological examination, multiple nodes of round formed, so on and so forth. So it's a uterus, yes. Microscopically, the tumor consists of fascicles of non striated muscle with tissue atypism. Now, there is tissue atypism, yes. So we know it's, uh, it's malignant, yes. So first of all, what I like to do, I like to cancel out the options that are not malignant. So we know it cannot be uh, leoma, uh, leomyoma because it's not malignant, yes. We know it can also not be fibromyoma because it's not malignant, yes. And we didn't talk about syncytial trophoblast or bilious, so we'll cancel out D. Yes, so we are left with what? A uterine cancer and E. Good. Let's look at the question again. There's tissue atypism, and they told you that it consists of what? Fascicles of non-striated muscle. Non-striated muscles are what? You are right from history. I told you that history is very important for part of non striated muscles are what your smooth muscles. Yes. So, what is a malignant tumor of smooth muscles? You are right. Leo Mayo sarcoma. Does it make sense? Good. A painless new growth without clear borders appeared in soft tissues of the left thigh of a young man left thigh of the young man. In the new growth of the biopsy material, the tissue looks like a fish meat. When you talk about uh, 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 a tumor looking like fish, it's malignant automatically. But let's read through. They said it consists of immature fibroblastic-like cells and numerous pathological mitosis that invade the muscle. So if it's invading, it's the word, it's malignant. Yes? So we know it's not fibroma, it's not myoma. Yes, cancer is not specific, yes. So we have removed C, D, and E. So is it fibrosarcoma or myosarcoma? Who wants to answer this question for me, students? Yes? Who wants to try? Who wants to try? Why? Please explain. Then this, uh, there are these uh, immature, immature and fibroblast, fibroblasts, yes. which Good. are located in this. Good, yes. Yeah. So, the student who answered previously, yes, I get where you are coming from. It was the tumor that invaded into the muscle. The muscle is not cancerous. It is a part. Is the tumor now that is malignant that is invading into the muscle? So that's why the answer will be fibrosarcoma. Good. I'm proud of you, students. Let's move. If it's five year old woman has a movable temperature formation of pasty consistency with clear borders under the submandibular area, histologically, the words, the lipocytes which form lobules, 
in different form and sizes were detected a thin layer of connective tissues with vessels separates these lobules. Yes, please. Yeah, what are they talking about? Look, they said that the woman had a movable formation, so the movable mass, yes, of pasty consistency on in her submandibular area. Histologically, the lipocytes, which forms lobules in different forms and sizes, so histologically of this of this mass contains what lipocyte. Now they want to convince you, of course, they are telling you a thin layer of connective tissue separates these lobules. Of course, we have we have connective tissues everywhere. So that's normal, yes. It's separating these lobules. So diagnosis disease. So the answer will be a lipoma because they're talking about lipocyte. Histologically, the lipocytes, yes. So that's why the answer will be lipoma, not fibroma. In fibroma, they would say that histologically there's a lot of what fascicles. So that's why the answer is lipoma and not fibroma. It's five. A patient had a tumor removed from the retroperitoneal fat. Microscopically, these fat cells show signs of cellular atypism, polymorphism, giant deformed cell with fat drops in the cytoplasm. What is the diagnosis, students? Please, somebody should answer this question. Liposarcoma. Good, yes. Can you explain why? Okay, so starting from the size is 16 times 8 times 16. That means it's, um, it has metastasized and it is now, it is now, um, is a malignant form of tumor. Yeah. And also cellular typism, polymorphism, yes. giant, the size is, is very big and is also a fat droplet. Good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Microscopically, a tumor of the upper lip consists of multiple small slit like cavities. Microscopically, a tumor of the upper lip consists of multiple slit-like cavities. They want to confuse you again. The walls of which are covered with compressed endothelium and fluid with fluid portions of blood and grooms. Diagnosis disease. Now, before I do this question, I also quickly do this question. Look here. During an operation, a 17-year-old 17, a patient had a Murray tumor subseriously detected on the lower surface of the liver. On the cut surface, it is presented by cavities with considerable blood content and thick connective tissue walls. Again, it's, it's, it's a lot of question, right? So let's start again. During an operation, a 17-year-old patient had a tumor detected in the liver. That's what they are saying, yes? On the cut surface, when they cut this tumor, they saw what a lot of cavities, which contains a lot of what blood content and thick connective tissue walls that was covered with endothelium. What is it, this diagnosis? The answer will be cavernous hemangioma. So that's why hemangioma means a tumor of what vessels. And that's why they wrote here covered with one layer of endothelium. You know from histology. That's why I told you histology is very important for part morph. Yes. If you're confused in this lecture, you need to watch histology. Then we know that our endothelium, uh, what is the epithelium of our vessels? Uh, simple squamous, I told you, also known as what endothelium. So, that, so any tumor of, because a tumor, any tumor of your vessel is hemangioma. But why are we going for cavernous hemangioma? Because they say on the cut surface, they saw a lot of what cavities with blood content. So it's a cavernous hemangioma. But in this question, they said microscopically, a tumor of the upper lip consists of what small slit-like cavities. I don't know if you can see. Can you see that in capillary? You can see small slit-like cavities, very small slit-like cavities here. But here, you can see that the cavities are larger. And you can see it's filled with what a lot of this tumor is a lot of um because the tumor is hemangiomas are, are, are tumors of blood vessels. But they have different types. Cavernous, meaning you see a lot of what big, 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 big like cavities with this uh, tumor inside, yes, with blood vessels. But in capillary um, hemangioma, it's small, small, small state like uh, cavities with um, blood vessels. So that's why in this question here, they said doing an operation was presented with cavities with cons when they say considerable blood content they want you to think that it's a lot it's considerable but if you look at this picture here where you have small small slits slits like cavities you can't tell me that 
you can see a lot of blood inside it. Yes, it's not considerable. You get it. So that's why we will choose in this option cavernous hemangioma. And in this option, because it's small still like cavities, we'll choose what capillary hemangiomas. An eyeball with, with black tumor, like an eyeball with a black tumor like mass in the choroid. So they just took a lot. There are multiple pathological mitosis in the cell. If pigment is detected in the cytoplasm, what's your diagnosis? So of course it will be melanoma. First of all, we don't say anything about pleomorphism, yes. So it will be melanoma because they're asking you, they say there's a pigment is detected in the cytoplasm of the cell. What's your diagnosis? So it will be melanoma. Why not neuroma? Please, in neuroma, they'll talk about a neuron. Do we say anything about neuron here? No. Also, they'll talk about something known as varicate bodies. Yes? Good. Neuroblastoma is in kids. When we get to neuroblastoma, we will see it, but not here. So that's why the answer is melanoma. The next question, a dark convex macula appeared on the skin. Patient did not, uh, patient, okay, but it did not disturb him. In the course of the time, this tumor began to enlarge, yes. They said the color changed into a black brown and a nodule could be palpated. A surgical examination of the removed tissue showed spindle and pore and, and polymorphous cell. Cytoplasm of which had a fibrous pigment. What tumor is this? So the answer will be melanoma. I disagree. The answer is meant to be uh, melanosarcoma. Yes, melano melanosarcoma. But we don't have melanosarcoma in our option. So that's why they put melanoma. But I disagree with this. The correct answer is melanosarcoma. Okay, because it talks about what polymorphous cells. So that's why the answer will be melanosarcoma. But we don't have melanosarcoma here, so we went for melanoma. A tumor in a capsule was removed from the stump of a lower extremity. Microscopically, it consists of spindle monomorphic cell with stick-like nucleus that form palisade. When you talk about a cell, that have a stick-like nucleus and form palisade is known as a what? A varicay body. They said that forms palisade structure together with fibers. What is this tumor? First of all, we don't see anything that's malignant. We all agree with me, yes? Because it's monomorphic, not pleomorphic. So we don't see anything malignant. So we can, it's not malignant uh, uh, neuro. neuro it's not malignant, it's not a sarcoma, and it's not just fibroma because we are talking about a neuron. Why am I saying we're talking about a neuron? Because they said a tumor is removed from the stump of a lower extremity. Now, what happened? I, I don't know if you have seen someone who has who has been amputated before. There's always one tiny growth that always comes out. I think that that's known as a stump. Yes, and it mostly contains nerve fibers. Yes, your body tries to regenerate, but it fails. Now, that is known as a neurolemoma. Yes. But why are we not going to go for benign uh, neuro lemoma? Because they said together with fibers. So that's why the answer will be neurofibroma. So A. Ah, why am I feeling this thing? They said it's B, benign neuro. Why am I feeling this? <laughs> uh, 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 neuro, neuro what? Neurofibroma. Fibroma. Oh, okay, okay. My bad, my mistake. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. A neurofibroma, please. Please, I'm so sorry. It's not the same thing as a, a neurolemoma, please. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. And please, when they talk about a stick-like nuclear that forms palisade, it is it is unique of what? A varicose bodies. And I told you that you find varicose bodies in what? A neuro lemoma yeah so that's why it's with benign neuro lemoma because it's talking about malignant it's not neurofibroma please neurofibroma is another disease entirely please we'll cover this in another section yes another disease entirely please the answer will be benign neuro lemoma they, will, they of course they they confused me let's continue a 38 year old woman was diagnosed with tumor in the parotid gland it consists of a single nodule separated by a connective tissue layer Histologically, the cells are of 
epidermoid type. So epidermoid, epidermis, yes, that forms all the structured. Mucin producing cells form tension bars that lines the cavity with mucus. The third element of the tumor is small cell with hyperchromic nucleus. What tumor is this? So we can see hyperchromic nucleus and then we know that it's characteristic of a malignant tumor. So of course, we're going to go for mucoid epidermal tumor. Why? Because they already said that pathologically, the cells are of epidermal type that form solid structures. They also consist of mucin or mucus producing cells that form tension bar lines that are filled with mucus. So that's why we're going for mucoid epidermal tumor. Okay, good. Finally, leukemia. During the examination of a mouse cavity, they are detected uh, a lot of things. Yes, what did they say? Hunter glossitis. On part of his surgery, when we did anemia, what did I tell you? Where did, what did I tell you? What disease do you find Hunter glossitis in? Of course, vitamin B12. Uh, oh, you see it in megaloblastic anemia. Yes, so that's why I go for vitamin B12 slash folic acid deficiency. And what did they also say? The color index is greater than one. And I told you that the color index is greater than one in what? In, malic in megaloblastic anemia. Yes, iron deficiency will have low color index. Death of a seven-year-old boy caused by acute post hemorrhagic anemia resulted from profuse bleeding from the digestive tract. Uh, 